So this is Snore here behind me. Um, we've had Snore for quite a while now. Do you remember when she came in? Um, she came in last winter out of uh, auction rescue. She is blind in one eye or at least has partial vision in her left eye. Uh, Sailor has actually been working with her quite a bit, um, but she does get pushy on that side. So we're gonna try to work on a little bit of that today and see what other issues might come up. But first we gotta get her caught. So once she's got her attention on me, I'm gonna go ahead and just wait over here for a minute. She saw an open gate and she was trying to go for it. Good girl. So I can't imagine she's gonna keep me on her blind side very long. So every single time she gets over there, she's gonna try to come back over to where she could see me. So once I get her on the lead and I'm working on a few things, that's gonna be one of my focus points is getting her used to being sent around on that blind side without trying to come in. Good girl. Let's work on slowly coming up to her. Good girl. There you go. So whenever she does come in, that's when I'm gonna give her a break. I'll let her think about it a little bit. When she gets her attention away, I might give her a little kiss, cluck. If she wants to leave, that's okay. I'll send her off. Right there, she's ready to look at me again. So I'll just come over here and wait a minute. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. I might send her around a little bit longer on this side. And I'll let her come back in right here. Good girl. So when I start walking up to her here, I'm gonna keep an eye on her. If she starts to look like she's feeling uncomfortable, I'll go ahead and just back up again. Good girl. Good girl. Ooh, good girl. Sometimes doing this with your horse can be pretty uh, time consuming. The point is, is I want her to hook onto me and stay with me. So when she's relaxed and she's looking in, I'm gonna take that pressure off. If she looks away, I'm putting the pressure on. Good girl. I'll see if I can't get up here on this blind side. Let's take it slow. Good girl. This is the side I caught her in when I was out in the pen with her before I brought her in here. I'll just give her a minute. She's gotta work it out, check out her surroundings. Good job. And when I pet her here, or reach out to pet her, she might get uncomfortable. Horses are really good about feeling energy. So she can, even if she can't see me over here, she can probably feel that I'm reaching out. Good girl. 
There I was able to touch her. She wanted to leave there. I kind of saved it by backing up, giving her space. Good girl. Good girl. Good job. Good girl. Good job. I'm gonna give her a little bit of a break here. Good girl. Good girl. Good job. Good girl. So now I'm just gonna see if she'll reach out to me here. Might lose her again, that's fine. You just get right back over here. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl.
I'm gonna keep her going a little bit longer here. She likes to try to find a couple spots to just kind of relax. I'll let her stop over there. I'll just let her follow me around a little bit right here. A lot of time when you're training, you might be trying to do one thing if that doesn't work, you got to be able to experiment with it. You got to be able to try a few different things to see if those will work. So I got her to come into me. She went all the way to the middle of the round pen. And I just started walking away. I might just walk around here for a little bit. See if I can get her to come back to the middle. She takes another step towards me here. I'll just stop. Good. Good girl. Good. Good girl. Good. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good. Good. Good girl. Good job. Good girl. Now if she makes an attempt to reach out and touch me here, I'll just walk away for a minute. Good.
girl. Good. That's way right here. You can keep going towards it until she stops backing up. She might run over the other side again. Oh, is that your friend? Do you know do you know that horse? Is that Sequoia? She just has an issue with keeping her attention on me. Once I get this halter on her, we'll start working on that. What are you doing?
Good girl. Good girl. Good. So at this point, she's just pretty much telling me that she doesn't want to do this. Good, good girl. So I have tried quite a bit of things here. So that time I was just trying to stay with her to see if that would make a difference. And if I wanted to, I could probably throw this rope around her neck and get her caught. But then you're gonna have to do that every single time you come out here to catch her. I'd rather take the time to help her understand then just do the quick catch. Good girl. Good. Good girl. Good girl.
Good. And sometimes it does take this long to get. Just even the halter on the horse. I've been in a round pen before with the horse for eight hours. It didn't want me to get up to it. The only way I could get it to its pen was getting a halter on it. So I just had to stick with it until I was able to get up there and touch it. Get the halter on. After that though, it didn't take much time at all to get the halter on that horse. She usually give you this much trouble? No, because I never let her go in the round pen. Oh. <laughs> you can't corner her to get her. I pick and choose my battle with life. Well, this is a battle that needed to happen. Good girl.
my guess is that she was able to get away with this a lot and nobody ever took the time to really work on this and get her caught. So it turned into a game kind of a keep away for her. We could use this flag here to kind of assist me a little bit more. I don't want her to be afraid of it, but I want her to respect it. Every time she makes an attempt to look at it or even thinks about looking at it or reaching out, I'll take it away. Like I've said before, this flag is just an extension of my hand. Good girl.
So now I got her here. She's pretty much caught unless I somehow lose this. But I'll just take my time with it and getting this on her face. I'll bring it up here. See if I can't get her to tip her nose down into it. Or if she just drops her head a little bit, I'll go ahead and slide it on. There you go. I'll make sure that this isn't tangled up. I'll go ahead and get my knot tied. Now that I've got her caught here, I'll reward her. That's a big sigh, huh? I'm going to give her a little bit of a break before we move on to do anything else. I know the medical team wanted to take a look at her eye real quick. So right now might be a good time for them to do that. And it'll give her a little bit of time to settle down. Realize that it's pretty easy to be with me. We didn't have to do all that running around. And this is all I wanted the entire time. Is that for her or me? <laughs> you can't have chocolate. Why not? They're not like dogs. I don't trust chocolate with anything with flavor. So sorry. Okay. Taylor brought me a snack. <laughs> Here I am. Because she thought it was necessary. But now she's kind of starting to think life ain't so bad if I just hang out. Oh, you want to go to your friends? Show that sometimes when you are trained. Huh? Start over. Okay. Sorry. You're fine. So everything that I just did right there kind of goes to show that when you're training horses, a lot of it is experimenting around. Um, I tried a few different things. I was just trying to get her attention on me at first, let her, let me get up to her. Um, I was trying to get her to hook on or join up and she would follow me, but she wouldn't stick around long enough for me to get up there and touch her. Um, I actually ended up just pulling the flag out, getting on her blind side and just using the flag to pet down that shoulder until she was okay with that. And then I was able to get up there and start petting her with my hand and finally get the halter rope around her. But horse training, it, it's all just experimenting. It's, it's doing things that you know, things that you've seen work, things that you've tried and, you know, has, have worked for you. But you got to be able to have a little bit of diversity in your, in your tool belt, I guess. You got to be able to have a few different things that kind of work towards the same goal because horses are different. Each horse is different. You never know what's going to work with a certain horse. So make sure that you learn a few different things. If you're following a guy, make sure you follow him and learn his method and don't just splinter off and start learning somebody else's method. If you don't know the first method all the way, you gotta, you gotta take everything in full when you're watching somebody working in the horse or if you're watching somebody's training videos you don't want to watch a couple things from buck brandon that have to do with a certain issue and then just split off and find something else with a different issue with somebody else like uh work schiller he's got a podcast and he was talking about that a little bit make sure you learn everything that that person has to offer so you have that and then go and learn some other techniques that way you have a very full tool belt you can Pull a diff few different things out of there if something isn't working for you. And then you also have the knowledge to be able to experiment and figure out new ways to get things done. Can I do it right now? Yep, let's do it. All right. So now that we got Snora haltered, we're going to work on a few things just to help soften her up and get her freed up and her legs and her everything. Um, she does have a tendency to kind of fight pressure a little bit. So I'm just going to ask her to back up. I'm going to go side to side here. And I'm going to keep that pressure going until she backs up nice and drops her head a little bit. Once she drops her head, I'm going to go ahead and relieve this pressure. She just lifts her head up and gets away from you. So now she's backing up pretty freely. I'm just going to keep this pressure going until she drops her head just like that. She just dropped it a little bit. 
But that's enough for me to be able to give her a break and let her think about that. It might take a minute. But when she tries to drop her head, I'll give that pressure back to her. Now she didn't drop it very much, but she did drop it. And we got to reward the slightest try when we're doing things with horses. And that's how they learn, that's how they get better. If you're expecting, so just for an example, if you're teaching the horse to stop and you're expecting the thing to slide 30 feet the first time you ask it to stop, you're probably never gonna get anything done with that horse. So now if I'm asking the horse to stop, let me use my seat first, ask it. If they start to slow down with that, I'll give them that reward. Now, I'm also gonna use different aids when I'm first teaching a horse to do something, so I'll use my hands a little bit. So if I ask that horse to stop, move my seat forward, it doesn't stop, but I pull these reins back and it stops a little bit. It doesn't have to be a sliding stop, but it stops. It could be a sequence stop, like just slowly go into that. I'll give him that reward and pet him. I'll give him a break, let him think about it, and I'll start working on it again. And I'm not expecting her to be backing down with her head all the way to touching the dirt today. I just want her to be able to back up without lifting her head way up in the air. So I might just hang out here for a little bit until she drops her head not even ask her to back up this time. Right there. She got her head up right after I released that pressure. Now just hold this pressure here again for a minute. Right there, she dropped her head. Let her think about it. Do the same thing, just get that pressure on that lead rope. There she went, her head, dropped her head a little bit that time again. Do it one more time here. Got her head up. We'll keep going side to side here. Right there. She took a step and she had her head low. Not as low as I'd like to see it, but that is a good place to start teaching them back up with their head low. So I might ask one more time right there. She actually was dropping her head while she was taking that step. So I'm gonna let her be on that for today. I'm gonna do one more thing with her here. It's an exercise called changing eyes. I'll give her a minute to kind of relax for a second. I'll go ahead and ask here. So I'm gonna ask a couple more times on that side. What are you doing? I might even hold the lead rope here to help her out. Now I wanna make sure that I got my arm out here to kind of block her. Since she is blind on this side, I do not want her jumping into me. And that was a little smoother that time, so I'll give her a few seconds to think about that. Good girl. Good girl. Where are you going? I didn't even ask you yet. You're just anticipating me. Just hold this for a minute, let her settle. And then I'll go ahead and ask her. And I'll do that on that side one more time. If she does it well, then I'll call that good. This is just an exercise to get them used to flexing their head around and it also helps them free up their body, their shoulders and their hind end at the same time.
and that was a lot smoother that time. Give her a minute. And last thing I want to address is that head being way up in the air. Just gonna ask her to lower her head for me. One hand on the bottom, right on that knot, the other hand right up here on top of her head. Just apply a little bit of pressure. Start off with as little pressure as you need, and then build up from there if you need it. Right there, she dropped her head, and every single time she goes down, I'll give her a quick break and pet her. Let's see one more try here. Good girl. And I'll call that good. So Sonora does still need quite a bit of work with a lot of those things. Um, her main issue would probably be just getting the halter on her in an open pen. But she is available for adoption. She has been here since last winter. I believe we got her in either January or February. And she needs a home. All right, you good? You done? All right, let's put you up.